we're starting out with just regular 3% hydrogen peroxide. Step one, pretty simple. We're just gonna uh, open air, heat it down to about 10% volume. So what I'm gonna do here is put about a liter in here, uh, turn the heat all the way up, and we're just gonna bake it down to about 10%, so from one liter to 100 milliliters. Um, so this part will get your concentration from 3% to 30%. So you could also just buy 30%, and that's probably a little bit more efficient. But if you want to do it from 3% to about 90%, this is the procedure. So I'm turning the heat all the way up. This is about a 180 watt heater. So this thing will only get to about 80 degrees Celsius. Um, so it's not actually gonna be boiling water, but uh, the water will evaporate. I put in a little magnetic stir. Uh, we need that for the final step. We don't really need it for this, but I think it's cool, so. Um, anyway, so we're gonna boil one liter down to 100 milliliters a couple times, so we end up with about 300 milliliters, and then we'll take it up to 90%. Right now we're still only about 54 degrees. Some of the water vapors uh, starting to exit. Um, the volume of the hydrogen peroxide has expanded a little bit. The reason that's important is when we do density calculations, uh, we're gonna have to make sure we know the temperature or wait for it to go back to room temperature because the volume expands with increasing temperature. It was about four hours later. I guess it got to about 90 C, maybe halfway down. So right now it's only at about 12, no, 6%. So not very concentrated. Almost there. Let's stop it. Yeah. Before we get to about 120 milliliters, and then when it cools down, it'll shrink a little bit more. Okay, so we've taken the peroxide down to about 10%, so we're hoping it's about 30. So I'm gonna turn on my scale, zero out the beaker there with the funnel. I'm gonna pour about 50 milliliters in and uh, we'll check the density, which will give us the estimate of uh, what the concentration is. Okay, so I ended up with about 42 and a half uh, milliliters. It was about 46 grams. So 46 over 42.5 is about 1.08. So, and the temperature of the stuff is about 30 degrees. So if I go to 1.08, draw a line across, intersect roughly 30 degrees, I think it's about 26 percent so that's key so just that's why you can't just boil it down and hope uh, you know you, the yield here is not 100 percent and so if we try to boil it down further in open air our yield's going to get worse and worse so you can't take this straight down to 90 percent it's just not going to work but anyway we're going to use this nice little graph here and we're going to use this to estimate our uh, percent h2o2 so I boiled it down a few more times and I ended up with about 400 milliliters of this stuff. The density was just above 1.1. <laughs> so looking at our little graph here, it's, you know, we'll call it 27%. So now we gotta figure out how to go from 27% uh, to 90%. Okay, so to take it the rest of the way, we're gonna do what's called a fractional distillation. So uh, start with using a one liter, whatever this is called. So I put 400 milliliters in there. So at 27%, uh, 400 milliliters is about 108 milliliters of pure H2O2. So I marked off about a line here for 100 milliliters. So I kind of know how much to boil off. So we're gonna vacuum distill it. This is the apparatus, fractional distillation tube here, uh, condenser. Um, and then we dump the remain uh, into this side over here. And so I also marked off about 
300 milliliters here, so I have a good idea of how much to expect. I want to see if it all comes out or if some of it gets sucked out of the vacuum. So just standard tubes, three inch, three eighth inner diameter tube, just goes to the faucet. Um, you run the water in, this cools uh, down your steam back in the water so you can collect it. And then we uh, have a vacuum tube, which just goes to this little vacuum pump, little gauge on there. So I'm gonna set it all up. Um, the other thing, I put a little bit of vacuum grease on here. Um, helps maintain the vacuum and also uh, so the components, the, they don't lock together, which is bad. That's how I'll set it up. Okay, so we're about ready to go. I have the 400 milliliters in that bottle. And then I put water around it because I want to really maintain as much of a constant temperature around that liquid as possible. So again, have that magnetic stir in there. I'm gonna turn that guy on, turn on the heat. I'm gonna take the temperature up to 55-ish Celsius, um, then maintain a vacuum and the water should come out. Um, so that'll take a little bit to heat up. And then the condensed side is over here. I pack it nice. We're gonna run a little bit of water uh, through our tubes. Keep this part nice and cool. And then over here we have our little vacuum pump. and uh, it's going to be a few hours and we're going to try to pull that water there down to there and uh, then we should have some pretty high concentrated hydrogen peroxide. So let's let that go. Um, so no big deal here. About 20 minutes and a half into the mercury. Not too bad. And this is filmed about a hundred feet above sea level, so pretty close to sea level. About up to almost 50 degrees, and you see we're still holding a uh, vacuum. And uh, so just 950 degrees, and you can see it's boiling in there. So I turn the stir off, so you know we're holding a good vacuum. So I ran it for a few hours at about 50 to 55 C, so about that much left. Probably need to take a little bit more, about maybe a little bit shy of how much we want to pull out, but I'm gonna check it and take a look. Okay, so the weight of about 40.1 milliliters is 52 grams, which is a ratio of 1.3. So looking at it, we're about 74%. So well on our way to getting to 90. I'm gonna just put it back in the distiller and uh, go for about another hour. Okay, so I just calculated it out. So I only have about that much, maybe 100 milliliters, about that. But density was about 1.41. And maybe 20 or 30 degrees in here. So uh, yeah, turn it about 94% right now so that's about it so that's how it's done um, next steps um, there are a lot of uh, stabilizers in here uh, stuff that helps prevent h2o2 from becoming h2o so i could distill it or think about how to filter it out but i uh, haven't thought about that too much uh, but there you go don't store this in closed containers um, because oxygen gas can build up over time and explode. Otherwise, treat it like gasoline. It's not flammable, but just don't do anything stupid. And that's about it.